Are you or your kids at risk of being kidnapped in the Philippines? First thing is, a lot of the kidnappings are not straightforward, um, and a lot of expats simply don't fit into what the kidnappers are looking for. The people that are normally kidnapped are predominantly Chinese and Indian, uh, where the Chinese business people and Indians are predominantly involved in what's called the five six, which is the money lending. Um, makes them a very easy target because you, they're normally looking for a million pesos, uh, quick payment, one and done, dusted within 24, 48 hours, where basically they kidnap somebody, then ask you for the ransom, you pay up and you don't go to the police, etc. That's where most of the kidnappings go on and it's predominantly business. It's... Um, they're looking for people that have got access to cash quickly and normally at least a million pesos. So don't assume that you fit into that category because the average expat is living on about $1,000 a month and often doesn't have access to the funds in the first place. It's only when you start splashing the cash and stand out like a sore thumb, you raise your risk profile. Um, the other side of this being is it's always the same areas. It's predominantly places like Zambonga, Sulu, um, Manila is prone to it for business kidnappings. Um, a lot of that come about for Marcos, would it, believe it or not, because when Marcos came to power, he wiped out a lot of the um, criminal gangs, then sort of took things over. <laughs> so a lot of this stuff is been ongoing. Uh, you can research, I'm not going to go into it in great detail. So for the average expat, the answer is no. You're not going to be at risk simply because you're not important enough. And this is the bit they don't tell you a lot about in the media, because media likes to scare everybody. The fact is, if you're living on a pension and um, driving around an old second-hand car and living a modest life, they're not looking for you. They're looking for upper middle class. They're not looking for the wealthy either, because wealthy come with a higher risk. Um, at the top of the tree, you're very likely to have the support of local government and influence. They don't want that amount of static. They don't want somebody that can actually make their life a nightmare. They're looking for people they can isolate and pick off easily. Now, there's been mentions about Americans and stuff. Well, firstly, they're normally in resorts and things relating to something else. Next thing is, a lot of the news stories never tell you the facts. The, for example, if you look at that one on Samal, the, the kidnapping, I've had reports that the people involved in that, the Canadians, um, were involved in the mining operations. Now, is it true or not? I don't have those facts, but the fact is, if they're involved in Mining, a lot of Filipinos will not get involved in mining in the Philippines because they're a very dangerous enterprise. And the same goes for many other business operations. They're high risk. There is a lot of competition and a lot of dangerous rivals. So a lot of stuff is not as obvious as it seems. So just go, oh, they've randomly kidnapped these Americans. No. The same with the, like I said, with these Canadians. It's not random. These things are not random at all. They are normally pre-planned, they'll have people watching you, they may even have somebody apply for a job for you, they may even be a member of family sometimes, which is why Zambonga, you hear quite a lot where, funny enough, the guy's been kidnapped visiting their wife's family. Bear in mind, nobody knows who they are except for the wife and her family, because they're from outside the region. So the alarm bells are right instantly looking at a specific group of people that you're associated with. So this is why I'm saying it's not as clear cut as they make out in the media, but you're not wealthy enough. The average expat is not wealthy enough to even get on the radar, um, which means your kids are safe, you're safe, because you're not really bothering anybody. You're more likely to have a run-in with the local thugs over um, something you've done to provoke them. Um, that's... That's been where I've seen three expats have problems because they've upset local thugs that um, basically they weren't even bothering the expats. It's the expat that's actually instigated it with the um, confronting them.
doing something stupid. Um, the fact is, the local thugs, they do stupid things. It's a bit like going into wherever you are, US, UK, whatever, and confronting a local gang in your own neighborhood. You're not likely to do it. I know we'd all love to say, oh yeah, we're weird, etc. But they always create problems. That's the thing with gangs. They're, they're up, they, um, they work on being a pain. They work on being a nightmare. And the problem in the Philippines, life is cheap, money is cheap. Um, sorry, guns are cheap. So if you're just living an average life, nobody's going to bother you at all. Um, like I said, like I said with Zambonga, it's been a lot of people's partners that have been involved. They don't really talk about that, but it's the only link that makes any sense. Because if they're outside the country and just visiting, visiting the wife, oh look, he's got money, I'm not surprised. That's why I just stay clear of it. It's just not worth the hassles. Places like Sulu, Zambonga, keep them. I'm not interested. I'd rather stop them somewhere like Cebu or somewhere else that's nice and quiet and nobody's bothering me or trying to do anything stupid. Alright, thanks for watching.